Uh, hello, um, my name is Chiyoko Miyose. Um, thank you for coming here today. I'm so thankful to Newman University's Techline Gallery for hosting this show. This space is beautiful and this is a perfect space for this work. So today I'm going to talk about this installation called Origami Cranes in Blue. And this work has my personal story behind it, so um, I hope you will get to know this story by the end of this artist talk. Um, so first I'm going to talk a little bit about myself and my art, and then I'm going to explain what inspired me to make this piece. And then I'm going to talk why I'm making installation art. So first I'm going to talk about myself, um, like Shannon introduced me, I'm from Japan. I was born and raised in a city called Wakayama, it's a small city and there was a um, beautiful nice looking beach and small mountains near the place where I grew up. Um, my favorite hobby growing up was reading. So it led me to major in English literature at the college. college. And I went to a college in Kyoto. I don't know if you are familiar with uh, Kyoto, but Kyoto is the um, former capital of Japan for about 1,000 years. So it has a lot of history and old architectures and people preserve a lot of traditions in this city of Kyoto and I really enjoyed this historical place and I have also lived in Tokyo Tokyo is the of course the capital of Japan it's a mod <laughs> more modern place and very busy place and I was there um, working at the international bookstore and so I met many people from different countries every day and I enjoyed it. And um, another thing I enjoyed around that time was traveling. I went to many countries, different places, including England where, about, uh, where I spent about a year. And later I was in Ireland for half a year. So I was in Wakayama, Kyoto, Tokyo, England, Ireland, and now I'm in Wichita, Kansas. Mm -hmm. so, <laughs> so I kind of feel living and traveling to different places has become like a part of my life. And when I was in Tokyo, I met my husband. And we decided to get married. And he's actually a third generation Japanese American and he was already working here in Wichita. So that brought me here to Wichita, Kansas. It was over 20 years ago and we've been here for 23 years. And we have two kids and they are both going to college now. So that's about my story. And after I I moved to the States, I started making artworks. I was always interested in art, but especially at that time, I thought maybe I could express myself better or communicate with people better through artworks. So I started taking art courses at WSU. I took only one or two courses at the time, and I stopped going there for a while when my kids were little. But I went back there and I ended up getting a BFA in painting in 2011. And I'm still making artworks and showing them here and there. <laughs> and my works are primarily painting and installation art. And when I make artworks, I have a consistent theme. I'm saying that I'm expressing my personal thoughts and experiences as a sojourner. A sojourner is like a person who stays in one place temporarily, like a traveler. 
and this is actually a word from the Bible. Actually, I have a Christian faith, and it's quite rare. I mean, in Japan, Christian population is only 1% of the total population of Japan. So we are, we are quite uh, a very small minority there. But uh, I thought this word sojourning fit to my thoughts and experiences as a, a person who lives in a foreign country. Um, living in a foreign country is not always easy. Sometimes I miss Japan, I feel homesick. I especially miss Japanese food, mm -hmm. <laughs> but, uh, but basically I like Kansas and Kansas people and I have a longing to belong to here, but uh, sometimes I feel difficult because I cannot identify with this place very well. Um, I feel sometimes I'm out of place. So when I was feeling difficulties, someone said to me, Oh, Chiyoko, we are all sojourners here. We are here temporarily, and we have a better place to go. And those words really consoled my heart. It made me think that I'm not alone, and we are all sojourners on the earth um, after all. So since then, I have been making artworks under this theme of sojourning and I'm expressing my life as a journey, my memories, and my longing to belong to a place to, to call home, and my thoughts on what makes a home home. I'm trying to search for the um, positive meanings in my life through my artworks, and I'm often exploring um, cultural, spiritual, philosophical, and social, social aspects of my life through my artworks. And my works often have layers of meanings. So that's about my art. And now I'm going to explain what inspired me to make this piece, Origami Cranes in Blue. Um, so based on this sojourning theme, this particular piece was inspired by my uh, recent trips to Japan. I've been going back to Japan more often than before because um, my mother has been sick there. She, she cannot talk, she cannot move, uh, she's just lying on the bed. So um, it's, it's sad to, be, to see her being like that. Um, but, uh, um, but it's also a blessing to spend time, some time with her there. And it makes me um, think about meaning of life. Um, I believe God has a purpose for her life in, even in that kind of condition. And, and also, it makes me wish that Japan was closer. <laughs> it takes more than 15 hours from here to get there. We have to fly over the big land of America and the big Pacific Ocean. And one time when I was on the airplane to go back to Japan, I, in my mind I started seeing an image of a bird flying over an ocean in the darkness. And uh, this bird is me, like a sojourner, um, who is looking for a place to call home, the place to land, but there's no land because it's a big ocean. And I decided to use origami cranes for the image of the bird because origami is the ancient craft of Japan. It definitely talks about my original culture and country. And also origami reminds me of my mother who used to make origami pieces for me when I was a little kid. So in my mind I can almost see her hands movement and I can almost hear the sound of the paper she was folding and, uh, and cranes have uh, symbolic meanings, several symbolic meanings in Eastern Asian culture. They are like long life and good fortune 
Um, but these cranes are now flying in the darkness. And this reminds me of my mother again. Um, my mother used to be a very healthy person, very cheerful, friendly, so she had many friends, but now she's lying down on the bed. So, so the cranes can be me, a sojourner, and it can be my mom, m my mother, or it can be anybody. So there's a layers of meaning here. So then I thought I want to have hope in the image. I wanted to have a spiritual connotation here. And the lights represent hope to me. And I decided to use black lights. I was always interested in this black lights uh, material um, because of the effect of glow, glow in the dark. The pieces glow even in the darkness. And it's kind of, uh, it talks to me um, like a truth in paradox. I often think that uh, um, things like when I am weak, I'm actually strong, or when I go through hard time, it's actually the time that I can grow up as a human being, something like that. I know it's very hard to think this way when we go through hard time, but at least I want to think that way. I mean, I want to see the positive side of my life. And also, I like the contrast and fusion of the um, ancient craft of origami and kind of uh, modern technology of black lights. It's like a metaphor to me to say that um, me with old cultural background is facing this new place that I cannot identify very well. I, ca I cannot identify with very well. Um, there's a contrast there, but also there's a nice harmony and mixing um, there. I'm, when I see the image, I kind of feel that way. And, uh, and also the black lights engages with the viewers. The viewers white glows glow in the dark too, so hopefully it's, it's evoking the feeling to the viewers like they are part of the work. <laughs> and, uh, and the material of thread often represents a notion of relationship and connectivity <coughs> in my visual language. And I use a lot of technique of tying knots, and this technique represents a notion of the process of making relationship. It can be the relationship with people, and it can be the relationship with place and time. And here I'm asking my personal questions to me. Uh, where is the place to fully call home? And what makes a home home? So that's how I got inspiration for this piece. So now I'm going to talk why I make installation art. Um, installation art is a very difficult discipline. It, it takes time and energy, and they are often not sellable. I mean, they can't sell. So, so I often wonder why I do this. <laughs> it's very hard. It's very nerve-wracking as, as well. We cannot see how it's going to turn out until you finish installing the piece. But um, I started making installation art about eight years ago. Um, I thought that as an artist, I should express beyond the scale of the canvases. And soon I learned that the um, installation art um, widened the possibility of expressions um, the materials can tell something, light and shadow can tell something, and smell and sound and kinetic movement can tell something. And installation art offers immersive experience to the viewers. 
the viewers can go inside the piece and they can be a part of the work. So it definitely um, creates another dimension of um, expression. And it's so exciting. I mean, being a part of the work is exciting and I myself get excited with my own <laughs> work. And yeah, it's exciting and fun. And the last three installation art is often ephemeral. And after this show ends, the piece will disappear. It, it, will, stay, it will stay in our memory, but physically it will disappear. And I think there's certain beauty in ephemerality. Uh, I, I think, um, you know, from ephemerality, I think we can say that each moment never comes back and each moment of our life is important and our life is precious. If I can send that kind of message through my artworks to the viewers, I think it's the most beautiful thing that happens to my artworks and to me as an artist. So that's all I have. Um, if you, uh, I hope you got the idea of this work more now. And if you want to know more about my work, you can visit my website at shiokomiyose.com. And um, later you, you, you're welcome to come into here and take photos and post them on <coughs> your social networking system. And, and when you do that, it would be nice if you can hashtag my name, Chiyoko Miyose, and the title of the piece, Origami Cranes in Blue. So that's all for me, but do you have any questions? Any questions for Chiyoko? Yes. How has the installation that we're seeing right now, how has that changed from your original concept when you first started thinking about the piece? Uh, you mean original concept? Well, when, when you, since this is a, an installation, before you went into it, did you have an original idea of what it might look like? And then has that morphed, or is this um, a little bit different, or is it exactly how you imagined it right from the beginning? This is pretty much exactly how I imagined. This is the second time to show this piece. Last time was in Oklahoma City. So, yeah, last time I was a little, you know, nervous about how it's going to look like. And, uh, but this one is pretty much how I uh, imagined, and I'm so pleased with that, yeah. Yeah, thank you. But, but, <laughs> well, I'm sorry. Um, um, the process of making the piece made me think a lot this time. Last time in Oklahoma City, um, three people helped me with installing this one piece. So I didn't do much about climbing up and down the ladder. Yeah, but this time I did uh, got help from Shannon, and mostly I did by myself with the, um, the strings. And I thought, oh my goodness, this <laughs> is a lot of work. And, but I think that I, I have, um, I'm, I'm healthy enough to do this. And I thought about my life a lot. <laughs> uh -huh, yes. yes. Great, great talk. Uh, thank, thank you. I myself, I work off a lot of study drawings, and I'm seeing what you do with your installation. Are your drawings in your head all the time, or do you do drawings and then reference those as you're performing the installation work? I do drawing first, and I imagine it in my mind a lot. Sometimes I have to make flexible changes. The every. Uh, uh, Every uh, space is different. Yes. All right. Yeah. So it's a combination. Yeah. Yeah. Very mm. good. Thank you. Thank you. Um, approximately how long did it take? I may have missed this because I just came in like halfway. No, no. But approximately how long did it take you to create the entire installation? For this particular piece, um, to make the origami pieces, it took about three months. It's got 10 origami cranes, but it took about three months. 
And to install this whole piece here, it took whole three days this time. Mm -hmm. yeah. I'm, I have an interest in origami since I did that whenever I was younger. So yeah. It's a beautiful, beautiful entire gallery. Ah, thank you. Hi. Um, I just wanted to thank you for pointing out uh, about uh, how each moment in our life is a gift from God. That's something to really that spoke to me especially uh, today. So thank you. Oh, thank you. I also like how you made it so personal, how you connected it to your mother and, and the culture that nurtured you. And, and the journey to get there across because it is uh, so immersive when we visit when we go inside that and that's interesting to give it a new dimension about your journey and how it, and how it was so personal to you so thank you for sharing that. Oh, oh thank you thank you for saying that yes Shioko, um you mentioned that you're a painter and you do other installation works and you talked a little bit about the thread in your visual language being a metaphor for connection, um, whether that's connection to people or spaces or places. Um, could you talk a little bit about, for the non-artists in the group, um, what, what other metaphors do you create in your visual language? And you talked about the lights being hope in this piece. Are there other examples of that that you could tell us about from your work? Um, any work of any mine. Work? Okay. Well, one interesting material that used before was used dryer sheets. <laughs> I collected used dryer sheets from different people. Uh, one time I made uh, another installation, I collected about 1,500 dryer sheets. And these represent individual people to me and also um, kind of idea of um, <coughs> this piece was actually made for a group show with a the theme of surface. So I was wondering how I can get to know people beyond the surface, I mean, beyond the stereotyped idea of the people or something like that. So, so yeah, another another um, material that I used recently was used clothes from my clo uh, close friends and family, and th those represents uh, again uh, individual people that are close to me. And once I used used um, videotape, the black videotape. Um, it was representing memories to me. So something like that. I, I like to use dis discarded uh, materials. Materials. I like the idea of recycling. So <coughs> yeah. What else? Yeah. Does it is it okay? <laughs> okay. Anything? The, to get it to hold the structure after you tied the threads, what kind of stiffening agent did you use? Stiffening agent oh, for... To get it to hold the form. I'm sorry, because you have tied... Could you repeat the question for us in the back? Oh, I was just asking what kind of agent she used to get it to hold the shape after she had tied the threads. Oh. Uh, for the crane part, oh, there's no stiffing agent. <laughs> uh, I mean, you mean I made a surface with just tiny okay. knots, they, threads. Then you must mm. have, have threads holding them in place, I guess. Is that? Oh, okay. okay. Uh, I, uh, if you see them close, you okay. will see, uh, see the, okay. the um, amateur, amateur of the um, steel rods there. And I used some wires oh, okay. to, yes. to help the shape hold. Okay. Yeah, hold. Yeah, yeah. All right. Thank mm. you. Thanks. Yeah. <laughs> Any questions? How can you talk a little bit? Uh, 
This is the first installation work we've shown in the gallery this year. And so we visually understand a difference, but um, what does it mean for you as an installation artist compared to a painter? Like how does installation differ for you as the artist? Oh, um, well, yeah I'm, yeah, I'm doing both painting and installation. And um, both medium, both discipline has its own beauty. But installation typically, I think, like I said, it uh, offers immersive experience more than the paintings. So that's another dimension for me that I can enjoy. And, and I like to see people being inside a piece. It's so exciting. I like to see people enjoying my piece that way. <laughs> but of course, and installations are three-dimensional art, so it's a little different from um, paintings. Does it doesn't answer my question. <laughs> okay. Sorry. Any other questions? All right. Well, thank Chiyoko, thank you so much. Thank you.